Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern and having read all the newspapers and beguiled the rest of the evening with his banker's book went home to bed. He lived in chambers which had once belonged to his deceased partner Jacob Marley. They were a gloomy suite of rooms in a lowering pile of building up a yard. It's a fact. There was nothing at all particular about the knocker on the door of this house, except that it was very large. Also that Scrooge had seen it night and morning during his whole residence in that place. Also that Scrooge had as little of what is called fancy as any man in the city of London. And yet Scrooge, having his key in the lock, saw in the knocker, without its undergoing any intermediate process of change, not a knocker, but Marley's face. Marley's face. with a dismal light about it, like a bad lobster in a dark cellar. It wasn't angry or ferocious, but it looked at Scrooge as Marley used to look, with its ghostly spectacles turned up upon its ghostly forehead. As Scrooge looked fixedly at this phenomenon, was a knocker again. Poo poo, he cried and he closed the door with a bang. In half a minute Mrs. Cratchit entered, flushed but smiling proudly with the pudding. Like a speckled cannonball, so hard and firm, and blazing in half of half a quartern of ignited brandy and bedight with Christmas holly stuck into the top. Oh, wonderful pudding. Bob Cratchit said, and calmly too, that he regarded it as the greatest success achieved by Mrs Cratchit since their marriage. Everybody had something to say about it, but nobody said or thought that it was at all a small pudding for such a large family. Any Cratchit would have blushed to even hint at such a thing. At last, the dinner was all done, the cloth was cleared, the hearth was swept and the fire made up. The compound in the jug being tasted and considered perfect, apples and oranges were put upon the table and a shovel full of chestnuts on the fire. Then all the Cratchit family drew round the hearth. At Bob's elbow, the family display of glass, two tumblers and a custard cup without a handle. But these held the hot stuff from the jug, however, as well as golden goblets would have done, and Bob served it out with beaming looks as the chestnuts spluttered and crackled noisily on the fire. Then Bob proposed. A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us, which all the family re-echoed. God bless us. Everyone, said Tiny Tim, the last of all.